I'm Neetha Bidway. Welcome to Good Revenue. Today, we're going to do a deep dive into AI. Almost three years after the launch of ChatGPT in November 2022, generative AI has still managed to really dominate the news, while at the same time displaying a bit of a mixed record when it comes to return on investment. So today, we're going to dig into all of the data that we could find which really tells an interesting story about where AI makes the most sense in the near term. Hit the subscribe button. And as always, you can find links and references to everything we talk about in the show notes. Thanks for joining us. From the minute it was released in November of 2022, people were absolutely bowled over by ChatGPT 3.5. A million people used it in just five days, and the race to fund AI investment took off. By 2025, $400 billion was committed to AI investment, according to data from Mary Meeker's AI report. It's one of many resources you can find linked here. From the start, the projections were staggering. Goldman Sachs released a report in the spring of 2023 they forecasted a $7 trillion gain in GDP over 10 years. But not to be outdone, McKinsey also came in with a report in 2023 with an even more staggering estimate. They thought that the impact of AI would be anywhere between 17 to $25.6 trillion. The early wins from this technology seemed to validate the hype. The tech and financial sectors in particular were early winners, and they were showing a 41% ROI by 2024, according to a report from PwC and Snowflake. The thing is, underneath the surface, cracks were forming. By 2025, three themes emerged as primary reasons why that initial unfettered promise of AI may not materialize, at least not in the current form. First off, there were the technical limitations. So AI project failure rates have really increased over time. They were about 17% two years ago, and by early 2025, they rose to 42%, according to reporting from S&P Global. In addition, Salesforce has revealed a 65% failure rate for complex business tasks in a May 2025 report. And they also noted some issues, some serious issues with data confidentiality. In addition, respected entities like NASA have noted that LLMs are not suitable for mission critical uses or safety needs as of January 2025. Multiple sources, including Apple, also concluded that one of the problems is is that AI doesn't really think. And there's a lively debate going on about this. You might have an opinion as well. But one thing that there is clear consensus about is at their best, LLMs do seem to be very good at pattern matching. And that certainly does have important uses, which we'll get into in a minute. The thing is, the latest hot topic is also not as promising as it seems for a couple of reasons. And we're talking about AI agents. Gartner released a report earlier this year indicating that its estimates about AI agent efficacy are pretty dismal. They think that 40% of projects will be canceled by 2027. Then we've turned to another issue for which no one really seems to have a solution as of now, and that is the environmental effects, which are tough. In the last decade, power usage, particularly in the United States, has been relatively flat. And that completely changed. We've been on track to break records for the last couple of years, and it's going to happen again in that we're expecting energy usage in 2025 and 2026 to be the highest ever. And the reason is data centers. AI data centers consume 4% of electricity back in 2023, and we expect that to triple by 2028, according to analysis from MIT and data from the U.S. government. 10 tech companies account for 50% of that data center energy use. In addition, the global consumption of energy is expected to surpass 1,000 terawatts 
of hours by 2026, which is just a huge amount, and that comes from IEA. Finally, the cooling demands, meaning the need for water, may reach 720 billion gallons of water annually by 2028. So real serious challenges, and that is also reported by MIT's Tech Review. Another category of risks that need to be considered are societal. Multiple studies have linked AI use to declines in critical thinking, and we will include links to the ones that we've found. OpenAI's own research has disclosed a serious problem with toxic personas that they've identified within their own AI models, and that comes from reporting in 2025. Anthropic, another huge player in this space, their research identified agentic misalignment risks, wherein models might actually act against human interests when they're in autonomous roles. And that's also from research they released in 2025. Finally, there's a huge bucket of challenges having to do with bad actors. And these, I think, are best understood in two camps. One is serious foreign adversaries that are wantonly and willfully using things like malicious AI swarms and grooming LLMs. Uh, doing all sorts of things uh, to destabilize opponents. That's very clear, and there's a lot of data that we've found and will link to. There's also some examples of researchers trying to take advantage of AI and LLMs to preference poor or weak research over competitors. So there's a real range there. The main conclusion here is that it's pretty easy for bad actors to take advantage of AI, and we don't immediately have solutions. The latest threat has to do with zero-click potential, and it came out of some reporting from Dark Reading, which we'll include. And the challenge here is that external attackers basically just need your email in order to take over a system in some AI agentic models. What they can do is they are able to completely take over enterprise AI agents, and they're able to access sensitive data and systems through their perception as being trusted users. And we don't have a great solution for this. So these are really sobering challenges across both the technical issues, the environmental concerns, and these societal risks that we have to figure out how to mitigate. In addition to all of this, there's been more of an economic reality check in the last year as well. MIT released a really interesting report, which is definitely worth taking a look at. It has a much more tempered estimate of the economic contributions from AI. In this report, the estimated contribution to GDP growth is just 1% to 1.6% over the next decade versus the much loftier earlier predictions a few years ago. The math isn't very forgiving. This study estimates that only 5% of tasks can be profitably automated over the next decade, and that productivity gains are going to average just 0.05% annually. In addition, the OECD has found that employment shifts favor more of a hybrid AI human approach, meaning that humans need to be in supervisory roles in order to get real efficacy from AI. Now, this isn't all bad in that having humans in the loop and having a partnership where humans can do the things like creative tasks that we're great at and systems that are great at pattern matching can do things that humans aren't so good at, that actually seems like a pretty solid approach, but it still is going to require quite a bit of partnership. And as of this summer, with the release of the latest chat GPT model, that's GPT-5, there is some disappointment as users are adjusting to it and OpenAI is also trying to mitigate some of the concerns and the negative feedback that they're receiving from that launch, which just happened. So even though it seems pretty likely that AI hype is somewhat overblown, there are some interesting glimmers of where AI can be a real value add. Healthcare. Healthcare is the space where AI actually seems to be achieving the impossible. And it also seems to me to be a great example of where a human AI partnership can do more than either would on its own. Here's a few of the examples. The drug response predictions reached 99.3% accuracy, according to reporting from the Institute of Cancer Research. 
AI systems have also accelerated cancer drug delivery at companies through the last two years. There's been a bunch of different reporting and we'll include a couple of articles. There was also a really interesting story back in May where an AI tool is actually helping researchers determine which patients are genetically best suited to benefit from a prostate cancer treatment. AI-assisted patents have grown 35% in 2024, and they seem to be really successful in narrow technical domains, according to the U.S. Patent Office in 2025. So why does healthcare work? while business needs struggle? The answer lies in fundamental structural differences. According to the Scientific American, healthcare operates with curated, standardized data sets under strict regulatory oversight. And medical applications have binary success metrics. They either work or they don't. Business outcomes, on the other hand, are ambiguous. And sometimes we have shifting definitions of success or things that we call KPIs that really don't have much to do with true business outcomes. So while business AI faces a lot of elevated error rates and subjectivity, also dealing with things like hallucinations and frankly, AI systems that just make up information, there's minimal regulation in the space and the data sets are noisy a lot of times AI and LLMs are working off of public data sets or they are taking copyrighted materials without permission. So there are a lot of usage issues that make it more challenging to have the rigor and the structure that you would see in a field like healthcare. There are some other examples as well, including Walmart. They built a private AI system and they've seen some really significant successes over a population of 1.5 million associates. So I think there are other structured, focused examples out there waiting to happen, which could yield a lot of economic success to business as well. But it's not as clean cut as healthcare. And I think some of this might be surprising to folks who don't think that AI should have any regulation. I personally wonder if having some structure, some foundation, and real rules and safeguards, I wonder if those constraints might not be a way to actually have greater ROI for businesses and customers in AI. Looking ahead, the real question for AI advocates and for people who want to benefit from it, I think, is how to navigate the promise, the risk, and the responsibility of all of this potential. The industry forecasts project uneven yet meaningful AI-enabled improvements. Still, these are limited to rules-based tasks, according to work from PwC in 2025. The OECD believes that large-scale displacement of human labor isn't as likely as some may have thought, Instead, they think it's more likely that hybrid roles and reskilling will define workforce evolution. The big takeaway here is that strategic discipline seems to pay off, and the investments in clearly defined problems are yielding more ROI for businesses rather than the chase for generalized artificial intelligence. Speaking of which, I would recommend checking out the AIIII study. According to 78% of AI experts, our current trajectory for AI is not going to yield AGI. And if that's something you're interested in, you might want to take a look at that analysis. Domain clarity is also super important. Overall, it seems like there's real promise in AI but only when we're focused and disciplined in its application and in the expectations for the systems. And it also seems like there are some really serious security issues that we haven't solved yet. And I think any business that is serious about widespread deployment of AI needs to be similarly focused on ensuring that your own data, your IP, and the safety of your employees is taken care of if you're going to be using outside AI tools. It seems pretty clear that AI isn't going to be the magic bullet to solve every problem in the world, and that it's a better fit for more focused, disciplined problems where you can clearly measure the ROI. In those examples, people have seen benefits from the data that we can find. So as always, we really hope that this analysis has been helpful to you, and we will see you here soon. 
Thanks for listening. If you liked what you heard, leave us a review, subscribe to the show, or check out another episode. We appreciate your support.